Look who it is. It's you, deep in the rabbit hole, binge-watching videos about online privacy, VPNs, different private browsers, and to end encryption. You've seen it all. And now, now you're using Tor. Nice! You feel pretty good about yourself, huh? Anonymous, untrackable, a digital ghost. But wait, hold on, brother. Why are you logged in into your YouTube account? What are you, stupid? Oh, but I like my recommendations. Yeah, well, enjoy those curated videos while Google pieces together your whole digital footprint. You went through all that effort. And for what? So now you can feel private while still handing them the keys? Come on, this isn't convenience. This is sloppy. But you know what? It's not you. It's them. The YouTubers, the blogs, the endless advice that just tells you what to do. Use a VPN, use Tor, stop using Google. But never why. Alright, it's to stay anonymous and to protect yourself against the big corp. Well, this is very non-specific. So the real question then is, who are you protecting yourself from? Because if you don't know that, then you don't actually know what works for you. And that's where threat modeling comes in. But here's the thing, privacy isn't just about picking the right tool. It's about making sure that when one part of your life is exposed, the rest doesn't crumble with it. That's called compartmentalization, and this is what turns random privacy tricks into an actual strategy. So sit tight, because we need to talk about how to make this stuff work for you. Let's start off with the story. Meet Alex. Alex dove headfirst into the world of online privacy, Tor, VPNs, all that good stuff. But here's a twist. While Alex was busy locking down one part of his digital life, he left the rest wide open. He used the same email for work, gaming and social media. When a minor data breach happened, it snowballed into a full-blown disaster, compromising everything from his freelance income to his personal contacts. What if Alex had taken the time to map out his own threat model? What if he split his digital life into separate compartments, so that one breach wouldn't take everything down? Well, that's what we're here to explore. So what exactly is threat modeling? In simple terms, it is a process of asking what am I trying to protect, who might be after it, and how could they get in. It breaks down into a few key components, so let me show you those and also map some of them for Alex, just as a little exercise. Assets. Those are the things that you care about. Your personal data, finance details, creative work, and even your reputation. For Alex, it's his portfolio, financial data, social media presence, and private chats. Adversaries. Who might be targeting you? It could be cyber criminals, data brokers, or even someone close to you with malicious intent. For Alex, it's hackers targeting freelance income, phishing scams, and data breaches from platforms that Alex uses daily. Attack vectors. This is about figuring out how someone might breach your defense. Think of a weak password, reused account, or unpatched software with backdoors and shit. Risks. Finally, you need to assess the potential fallout. What is the worst thing that could happen if a breach occurs? Remember, a one-size-fits-all approach wouldn't cut it. Your threat model should be unique for you. Now let's add another layer. Compartmentalization. Remember Alex from before. He's just an example, but people, such as yourself, are much more complex, with different areas of their life. So you can imagine your online presence as like a house with several rooms. If one room gets broken into, the others remain locked and safe. By separating your digital activities using different emails, passwords, and even devices, you reduce the risk that a breach in one area will expose your entire life. And this isn't just a nice to have. This is essential if you're serious about online privacy. Compartmentalization makes your defense modular, making sure that your personal, work, and casual online lives don't all collapse if one wall is breached. Alright, let's make it real. Think about yourself. Pause the video for a moment and ask yourself, what are my most valuable assets? Who or what might be targeting me? How might the attacker try to get in? Write down a few notes or even grab a piece of paper and draw a diagram to sketch out your thoughts. For example, here's what helped me to understand this better. I opened a obsidian canvas and separated all of my activities and assets into different groups. Private for the things like doing research or reading news and non-private for the things that I need an account for, work and social media. And then I think, 
Some of those things are my work, some are personal. So I separate those into more different groups. Now I can clearly see all of my activities. Yeah, this isn't the best method. But I think this is a good starting point, so you can see which assets require which privacy measures. And of course there is a number of general good practices, like using a strong password, but you know what? The best part is that you probably already know how to protect yourself. You have a password manager, you use a good browser, but now you understand your assets, the potential threats, and the attack paths. You're no longer blindly following generic advice. You're building a strategy that is uniquely yours. And also keep in mind that this isn't a one and done deal. Threats evolve, and so should your model. So revise and renew your plan regularly as your digital life changes. Okay, we got that out of the way. Now let me quickly show you how to compartmentalize different areas of your life. You can go as far as using separate devices or OSs. There is always CubeOS that allows you to make different cubes that are separate from each other, but I think the most practical way is to just use different browsers, because you can have them conveniently in one place, but also set them up in a way that one of them doesn't save anything and you can do whatever without fear of the big brother picking. And the other so that you can have all the convenience you need while still having all the necessary safety in place. And if you don't want to leave your favorite browser, there is a cool extension for Firefox. Hold on, let me stop here for a second. Firefox recently been in the news because they changed their TOS to not give you ownership of your data. Even though they have taken this back a little, this is still a good lesson on the why you shouldn't be blindly following, obsessing over any brand or app. Because they don't give a shit. They will sell you out any moment. So now it is a good time to look into the alternatives. Firefox forks are still relevant, LibreWolf is a great option, I heard a few good things about Zen and there is also Brave. So yeah, use open source, don't be over loyal to brands because they don't give a shit. Now back to the video. There is an extension called containers. As the name implies, it allows you to set up different containers. And the cool part is that sites from different containers don't share cookies. So that's useful. And again, the choice is yours, as this is a very personal matter. What will align with my goals and needs may not do so with yours. But yeah, we've laid the groundworks. We've talked about the basics of thread modeling, the critical role of compartmentalization, and even walk through the example with Alex. Now it's time to put it all in practice.